you, Lord, to be rooted and seated in our hearts, in our homes, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. And all we are going to learn tonight will transcend even beyond us and to our gen to generations after us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Thank you, children, for the prayers. Welcome, everybody. Welcome everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Married and loving it. And we are here. We are married and we are loving it. Speed of UC, Spain Women's Circle. And tonight we are having in our meet. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. Now we are having our meet. A dynamic woman of God. And we call her Babe Stutsky. She's Babe Adetutu. And I've known her for quite a while. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to put my video on, but my network is frustrating. Once I'm through with this, I'll put my video on. I don't want a station where uh um to cut me off while i'm introducing the speaker he's there with me I'm still working on changing this network or something else so please bear with me i'll put my video on shortly i don't want the network to cut me off while i'm introducing the speaker so i did it to show for somebody called coach Tuski. she's a teacher of god's word and a relationship and marriage coach and like we have been announcing on our God the group, she is very, let me use the word, frank. I know that you want to hear the truth tonight. And by the message of God, God is going to use that to answer those questions as quickly as they come. Let us open our hearts. Because I need to speak to some change in home and women issues. She's a counselor of over two decades. And she's the president of Relationship Building Block Organization. She also convenes her Relationship Building Block Conferences for singles, married, and new counselors as well. She's a, a counselor's counselor. Let us put it that way. She has written a book called Bedmatics. Uh, we're going to post the link to the short link so that if you are interested, you can click that link. Some people have been asking us about it. So you can also see and buy and read her book. Adetutu two is a leader in Harvest House Christian Center under the spiritual covering of her pastor and father, Pastor and Reverend Bimini Yeboda. She's married to Dr. Biodo and she's been married for 24 years. And the union is blessed with her three children. So with Jesus' joy, please let her mute and welcome I did to do into our miss this night. Coach Toski is here to answer our questions. So let's welcome <laughs> her. Welcome. It's nice to thank have you. you. Thank you. Thank you so welcome. much for having me. Welcome, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank We're you so excited much. to have you too. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Sister Inka, thank you. Sister Inka, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much. Sister Bisi, God bless you. Sister E.B., thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm really so happy, happy to be thank here. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's my pleasure always. Thanks for having me. Right. You're welcome. And this thank is you. a bit of news. We have questions for you tonight. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. Before we go into the questions, we've actually sent to you, you know, why do love win in uh, marriages? Why do we have that experience where things just fizzle out? And you know, you hear these stories, they had the odds to each other, and then all of a sudden, they just can't stand the sight of each other any longer. So, <laughs> probably you should start with them. What, what happens? when the honeymoon period is over. Okay. All right. Um, 
That's a very, very important question. It's also a very realistic question. So I'm going to give us various reasons why that can happen. Some of it are foundational reasons, they are fundamental reasons. Some of it are knowledge gaps. So I will start first with. I, I think I think some of this. Yeah. Okay, Thank you. I'll just meet up from here. Thank you. you can go All ahead. right. Okay. So let me start with the foundational and fundamental reasons. It is often an assumption that two people marry because they can handle marriage. A lot of people go into marriage, and the truth of the matter is that they don't know what it means to love each other. They never even loved each other. They were in lust. People married for different reasons. I have handled cases where by the reason why they married is because they slept together and they got pregnant. Do you get it? And then after the marriage, all of us are wondering why they are irritated at each other or why they are angry at each other. Excuse me, the foundation has been destroyed. So many times we are unable to differentiate between a husband and a spam donor. So because two people are going out, as of the time they were even going out, the two of them did not even understand what life is, let alone what marriage is. Do you get it? And then they slept together and then she got pregnant and then the families pushed them together so that they can cover up the embarrassment of somebody carrying a baby outside wedlock. And then she married him or he married her. Do you get it? So the foundation is destroyed. So we have cases like that, that the reason is because the foundation is destroyed. We have also marriages that I call them the gratitudinal marriages. Marriages whereby it's conducted because probably the lady um, was helped by the guy. Maybe she had family issues, she had um, financial issues, and this guy came along and just helped her. He was probably interested in her, so he helped her, paid her school fees, did all sorts. We read all these stories online. But she does not really like him. She's not that she's interested in him. And then he propositioned her and then she feels so indebted to him she just could not imagine cutting him and saying no so she went ahead and married him to be grateful for all that he has done you get it so we do have foundational reasons so some couples the reason why they are having issues after marriage is because the foundation was destroyed from the, the beginning and the Bible says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? That question was never answered in the Bible because actually there is no answer for it. If the foundation is destroyed, the only thing the righteous can do is to bring down the building, remove the wrong foundation, establish a fresh foundation, and then build upon it. Do we get it? So those are fundamental reasons, foundational reasons. But... In most cases, what happened is not that they didn't love each other before the marriage. What happened is what I call knowledge gap. What do I mean by knowledge gap? A lot of people sincerely think that marriages succeed because couples love each other. No. Marriages don't succeed because couples love each other. Hmm. You understand? If marriages succeed because couples love each other, I will be out of a job. Because 60 to 70 percent of my clients are married, and they didn't marry because they hated each other. So the question is, what now happened? Very simple. Two things. Number one, people don't understand that marriages only succeed because couples continue to do the things that keeps love alive. The source of everything is the sustainer. So for example, the reason why the human body cannot survive except on things that grows from the earth is because the human body came from the earth. The reason why the human spirit cannot survive outside God is because the human spirit came from God. The reason why aquatic animals cannot live outside water is because if you check the scriptures, God did not directly create them. God created the waters. He now commanded the waters to bring out after his kind. So basically it was H2O that produced the aquatic animals. 
So they cannot live without it. The source of everything is the sustainer. So when we stop doing after marriage, the things we were doing before marriage that made us to marry each other, that marriage will die a natural death. Because news flash, we have been thought that love never dies. I don't know where people got the idea from. Love is a living thing, so it can die. It can die. Everything that, that you feed grows. Everything that mm -hmm. you starve dies. So when after marriage, couples stop expressing love to each other, they will grow to dislike each other and be irritated at each other and stuff like that. That is one reason you get it that causes it. And the reason why that particular reason causes it is because there is a stereotype that all of us were brought up with when it comes to marriage. It's a stereotype that irritates me a lot. And that is a stereotype that after marriage, your eyes will open and you will face reality. And the meaning of that is that after marriage, the two of you are expected to begin to neglect each other. And you are supposed to understand because now we are no more dating. We are now husband and wife. It's the most stupid thing that people talk about. Under normal circumstances, <laughs> marriage is supposed to be dating square and courtship race to power two. In fact, it is mm. after marriage that you are supposed to increase the things you are doing for each other before marriage. Because the only thing it can lead to after marriage, you are not legalized to do it. So under normal circumstances, we are supposed to increase our affection for each other after marriage. We are supposed to express it more for each other after marriage. And the Bible gave us different examples. Like I can normally tell people, how did Abimelech discover that Rebecca was Isaac's wife? The Bible told us Isaac lied to Abimelech that Rebecca was his sister. So how did Abimelech discover? The Bible says Abimelech was in his palace and he looked out of the window of his palace to the open field and he saw Isaac spotting with his wife. Now, they couldn't have been having sex. They couldn't have been having sex because it was on the open field. But whatever way they were treating each other made it clear to Abimelech that no brother and sister can be doing this. So there was a public display of affection between Isaac and Abimelech. And they were so used to it that they were doing it in the open field, forgetting that the king was looking at them through the window. And Abimelech called them and said, this is, this is not your sister, this is your wife. This is your wife. Why did you lie to me? Do you get it? But we have been brainwashed to believe that, you know, after marriage, everybody, you are not my husband, you are not my wife. I tell people, there's not supposed to be any change after marriage beyond the fact that you cannot have sex legally. You are supposed to continue to treat each other the way you are treating each other with a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of affection, and then increase it after marriage. Because the commandment of God is that the part of the righteous is supposed to be a shining light that shines brighter mm -hmm. and brighter onto the perfect day. So it's supposed to get better forward. But we have been taught that after marriage, everybody must now face reality. Everybody must now neglect each other. The woman should face the children the more, the man should face his work. So in a bit to become a good husband and provider, he becomes a pathetic lover. In a bid for her to become a good mother and wife, she becomes a very you know, unreasonable lover. So they stop being lovers. They start to become couples. Mm. And so even though they are married, they are two miserable people living together inside the same house. So we need to understand mm. that a successful marriage is not a gift from God. No. A mm. successful marriage is a reward. Huh? It is, it, is a, <laughs> a successful, it's, yes, it's not a gift from God. Are you following me? No marriages are made in heaven. It's not true. You mm. get it. A successful yeah, marriage is not a, it's not a gift from God. It is a reward. It is mm. the reward of the deliberate and consistent efforts of both parties to make it to work. It's mm. a reward. It is not going to work automatically because we are now married. And I can normally say, 
it is important for us to understand that a Christian marriage is not necessarily a godly marriage. A godly marriage is not a Christian marriage. It's not true. We expect Christian marriages to be godly, but it is not automatic. Are you following me? Why? Very simple. The Bible is not a Christian yes. book, and it was not written for Christians. That's part of the mistakes of a lot of Christians. The Bible is not a Christian book. It was not written for Christians. The Bible is the eternal counsel and the everlasting principles of God. Anybody who obeys any part of it will reap the reward of that part you are obeying. And that is the reason why the Bible makes us to realize, even before the Bible makes us to realize it in Romans 2.14, I normally tell Christians, all of you, none of you obeyed the scriptures that says give your life to Christ as a believer. None of us obeyed it as Christians. We all obeyed that scripture as unbelievers. And the moment we obeyed it, it produced for us the result, salvation. But how you will know that unbelievers can obey the word of God? If you go to Romans 2, 14 in message, the Bible said, if outsiders who do not know the law of God obey it, more or less by instinct, they prove to us that the law of God is not an alien thing that was imposed upon us from outside, but it was woven into the fabrics of our being, proving the right and the wrong of God. So the Bible makes mm -hmm. us to realize that mm -hmm. unbelievers can obey the scriptures. So we actually have unbelievers that understand the principles of showing affection to your wife. Because they are obeying that principles, their marriage, the, the Bible verse again, Romans 2.14 in message, Romans 2.14. Now, because they are obeying that principle that has to do with marriage, their marriage will be very happy and blissful here. They will still go to hell because they did not obey the principle in charge of everlasting life. But because they are obeying the one in charge of good marriage, they will have a good marriage here. Are you following me? And the Bible proves it to us. Mm. The Bible said, even though we misquote that scripture, that is Ecclesiastes eleven three. we will say, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Bible did not say that. Go and check. What the Bible said was that if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? is not one foundation. We have different foundations mm -hmm. in charge of different aspects of our lives. It's why you can see a Christian who is righteous and poor. You can see a Christian who is holy and sickly. Why? That Christian understands the foundational principles of God concerning righteousness and holiness, but has not bothered to find out and understand the principles of God concerning health and prosperity. So it will be able to be righteous, but we'll be poor. We'll be able to be holy, but we'll be sickly because there are foundations. That is why the Bible told us, if you go to Psalm 78, verse 64, the Bible told us that the priests of the temple were killed, but their widows did not mourn. So they were pastors, but they were miserable husbands. So when they died, it's their church members who missed them. To the wife, it was good riddance to bad rubbish. He understood the <laughs> principle. You get it? He understood the principle of ministry, but he, do, he did not understand the principle of marriage. So he would be an excellent clergyman, an excellent priest of the temple, but he would be a miserable lover to his wife. So the Bible says when they died, those women did not mourn. There was nothing to mourn about. Mm -hmm. So hmm. these are the knowledge gaps the knowledge. that we have based on three basic <laughs> Thank you so things much. that is, you understand? Those are the three things that are destroying hmm. Christian marriages, stereotypes, religion, and tradition. So it's important for us to understand that marriages don't work out of the blues or because of wishful thinking. No. And that's why I always, for, for those who follow me online, 
for those who are close to me, they know that I say it every time that one of the strongest prerequisites and the most important prerequisite for marriage is spiritual, emotional, and psychological maturity. It is maturity that helps you to know how to respond to stimuli. That is why, for example, if you go to Matthew 19, 11, this is Jesus talking. So when I tell singles that part of the reasons why we have issues after marriage is because a lot of singles should not marry at all. I say it every time. You're not supposed to marry a child of God. Marriage is not for children of God. Being a child of God only qualifies you for church and heaven, not marriage. Because the Bible told us, Galatians 4, 1, it says, and here, so he is born again, she's born again. It says, as long as he's still a child, he's not spiritually mature, he's not different from a servant, it's like an unbeliever. And he gave us the examples of what they do. He says they come for Holy Communion, they get drunk. And they were sleeping with their father's wives. Are you following me? Things that were not even mentioned among unbelievers, they do it. Why? Because they are children. Children are expected to shit. So every time you marry a child, you will pack shit. Not because that partner is bad, but because he does not have the understanding to handle the wiggles and the, the, the expectations and responsibilities of marriage. And then we women, we complicate it. After marrying men like that, we will now turn them from husband to fathers. He cannot handle husband responsibility. We think by getting pregnant for him and turning him into a father, he becomes a better man. I mean, you are giving him double work to do. He becomes a worse man. Because hmm. he, he, couldn't, he couldn't even handle marriage itself. So Jesus told them, this, this, I'm reading from Matthew 19, from verse 11. Look at what Jesus said. The, I'm not the one talking. Talking here, it is not any of the prophets talking, it is Jesus talking here. Jesus answered and said, Not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. So, a lot of people who are going into marriage are not married enough, are not matured enough for a married life. They don't have the aptitude and grace. They are supposed to still be in children's church or in church, learning memory verses and growing. The Bible says, desire the sincere make of the world so that you may grow thereby. They're supposed to be growing. So we handed marriage over to them. So they can't handle it. He continued. He says, marriage is not for everybody. Some from birth, that scripture is Matthew 19, 11 message. It says some from birth, seemingly, they never give marriage a thought. So I tell women, it is perfectly normal for you not to feel like marrying. You are not sick. Singleness is not a disease. Marriage is not a drug. And it is not an hospital. Matthew 19, 11, message. It says others, they don't get asked. So there's no big deal if nobody asks you. You are not sick. It says, and others don't accept. So if you don't accept, you have not done anything wrong. It says, and some others decide not to even get married because of kingdom reasons. So it is perfectly normal to decide that I'm not going to marry because of the kingdom of God. He now finished it. He said, but if you are capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, it is then you should do it. So there is a largeness required for marriage. A lot of people have not developed that largeness. They enter into marriage. So when they enter into marriage, the responsibilities of marriage, the, the requirements of marriage, they are unable to carry it and they begin to miss it because they cannot bring everything together. Do you get it? These are some of the reasons why after marriage, you begin to have those issues. Now, for those who have that the reason is knowledge gap, all they need is to contact a good counselor, a good therapist, and once they are willing to learn, do you get it? We tell them what to do. If they follow instructions, I'm telling you, Love is like salt. We need to understand that. Love is like salt. If you observe, there is no food we can cook that we will not put salt in it. But at the same time, we cannot put salt alone on fire to cook and eat. That's the way love is. Alone, it cannot stand. The beauty of love is that when other ingredients 
of affection, attention, TLC, are together. Love now adds flavor to it. But if all those other things are not there, alone, it cannot stand. The person will become frustrated. And then finally, a major thing again that causes, that makes it to look as if love wanes after marriage is because a lot of couples assume that they know what their partner interprets to mean love. There's a lot of assumption in marriage. So for example, men have been taught, provide for her, make money available, don't cheat on her, take care of her, blah, blah, blah. And by doing all that, he sincerely thinks that he loves her. But let me give you a typical example. For example, if I were to tell all of you now, then I said, Gea Kutanda. I'm sure when I said Gea Kutanda, all of you are wondering, okay, she has been making sense. She has been making sense. Now she's no more making sense. What does she mean by Gea Kutanda? And then you, you wouldn't respond. Then I increased the decibel of my voice. And then I shouted more, Gea Kutanda. And then you're wondering, excuse me, what's she talking about? After a while, if I continue to shout Gea Kutanda, for those of you that respect me, you will ignore me. For those of you that does not send me, you ask me to shut up and please excuse you and stop wasting time. But for example, if I were to say, I love you, all of you will smile and say, oh, Coach Tuski, we love you too. But excuse me, when I said Gea Kutanda, I was also saying, I love you but I was speaking in Zulu language. And because you don't understand Zulu, you cannot respond. That's the way we love our spouses. You cannot love people the way you understand love. You can only love them the way they understand love. So for many couples, we have stereotypical ideas about how we believe a man should be loved, a woman should be loved, blah, blah, blah. But no, the Bible warned husband. It says, deal or relate with your wife, not according to wisdom. It says, according to knowledge. So for love to knowledge. continue to blow, it's according to knowledge. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is application of information. You cannot really be wise if you are not knowledgeable. Do you get it? So he said, find out what makes her tick. Find out what makes him tick. So take my husband, for example. My own husband's love language, like I say every time, is not in Gary Chapman's book. I had to discover it myself. And after relating with him for a while, I realized that the, the most important thing to my husband in the world, what makes him happiest in the world, is not Kine Koshi, word of affirmation. It's not a uh, service. If you like, don't have fun. If you like service, if you like, don't service. It doesn't care. If you like, cook. Mm -hmm. If you like, don't cook. It does not even care. If you like, it doesn't. There's only one thing. Peace of mind. Once you give him peace, you don't fight him and you don't fight the neighbors. Nobody comes to report you at home that you have scattered the market. You give him peace of mind. My husband can do anything for you. Take away his peace, you are looking for an enemy. I had to discover that, you understand? So that is why we advise couples that at least once every quarter, do a marital evaluation. Assumption is the lowest level of intelligence. Never assume that your partner is happy. Do a marital evaluation. The two of you find time to sit together and ask each other in the last four months what have i been doing that makes you happy and what have i been doing that is making you sad and listen it's not a court case whatever your partner is saying at that time your partner is right your own is to listen and take notes whatever he says you are doing that is making him or her happy are you following me you know that those yeah. are the ones you must increase in their tempo the ones that he or she says i don't like this one you know those are the ones you must improve upon. And the other person too does it. Do you get it? So you are oiling the marriage. 
you are not allowing depreciation to set in. You are not allowing familiarity to allow you to take each other for granted. Assuming that I'm already married, he will understand. She will understand, no. And finally, another reason why love wins in marriage is because couples are not prepared for children when they have them. It has been discovered empirically that when couples who have been married for three to four years comes to us under the guise of irreconcilable differences, when we start tracing it, we will always trace it to the birth of the firstborn because parenting is totally different from marriage. When you enter parenting without being prepared, parenting, if you are not careful, will drive a wedge between you and your spouse. So people need to be prepared for parenting before they go into marriage at all. And they need to be sure they are ready before they bring in children. Because once children enters into your midst, if you are not very careful, it can make you to neglect each other. And before you know what is going on, you are strangers in the house. So these are the reasons why it seems love wins. Thank you. But they are all resolvable. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Coach Tusky. But you have set us on fire. You can see the comments. Everybody is just catching revelation. Thank you so much. Let's you, go straight into the first question that we have today. Please, ladies, okay. let's send in our question. The person is asking, how do I let my husband know how I would like to be treated, treated better? Some practical okay. tips would help here. Then he said, I notice we only argue over money issues. Should I avoid <laughs> talking about them? Or how should I raise issues concerning finances? Okay. For me to help, I need to understand the area of money that you are arguing about. Finances is a wide topic in marriage. So which we, we need to know which area exactly that mm -hmm. always causes that issue, you understand? But let me give a general way of approaching things that irrespective of whatever is causing the issue is we always work. I tell people that knowledge and wisdom is the anointing, it's like the oil. So it will naturally take the shape of any container you pour into it. Do you get it? Now, one of the greatest mistakes that women make when they approach issues with their husband, I made it true for many years until I became smarter, is that when our husband hurts us or they do what we don't like, most times when we want to address it, we attack persons, we don't address issues. Because we are emotionally attached to them. So what normally happens is this. When our husband does certain things that we don't like, we instinctively feel that they did it intentionally to hurt us. Now, you need to listen to me that it is perception that determines reaction. Let me explain that statement. For example, if I was eating a bowl of big amala and begiri and nice meat, do you get it? And my best friend should enter. And my best friend says, ah, ah, tutu, look at you. See the big amala in front of you. You like amala too much. See the way you are eating. I will not get angry. I will say, you better join. If you know you don't, if you know you want to eat, join me now. If you waste too much time talking, I'll cook finish it. But I hope you know that if a young lady in the choir of my church should enter my room and say exactly the same thing, my reaction will be different. Why? My perception of her is different from my perception of my friend. So even though they gave me exactly the same stimuli, my perception of her will make me to interpret her own statement as insubordination, rudeness, and overstepping of boundaries. And immediately my reaction will be different. So it is perception that determines reaction. One of the reasons why when we talk to our husbands, when they're angry with us and we attack person is because we are emotionally connected to them and women are often emotional. So when they do something that we don't like, we sincerely somewhere in our mind believes that they did it deliberately to hurt us. So we attack person. And how do we attack person? Let me give you a typical example. So let's say 
my husband forgot my birthday. I hope you know that that is an almost unforgivable offense. How can you forget my birthday? So let's, let's assume that he forgot my birthday. Then I now want to address it. I hope you know that I can say something like, ah, ah, Kayode, you're a very, very heartless and careless man. You, you don't love me in the least. How can you forget my birthday? What kind of a husband forgets his wife's birthday? And then you are claiming to be a, a, a good husband that loves me. Do you understand? But also, I can address the same issue by saying something like, my husband, I'm really very confused. I mean, I just could not understand how you could have forgotten my birthday. Do you know that everybody that has been greeting me since morning, their greeting did not mean anything because your own was not there. And I've been brainstorming since morning how you could have forgotten my birthday. What happened? Why did you forget my birthday? Now, my first approach, I was attacking person. My second approach, I was addressing issue. Now, often we attack persons and listen to me. No matter how good and wonderful that man is, the moment you attack person, not just a man, everybody, once you attack the person of an individual, instinctively, the person will raise up defense and be trying to defend himself or herself. That will now make you more angry. That can you imagine? You did what was wrong. We are telling you. You are giving stupid excuses and trying to cover up yourself again. Then you get more angry, you fire back. And everything from there goes to south. Do you get it? So it is important that when we want to raise certain issues, such issues, do not attack his person. Raise the issue. So I don't know which, which area exactly about the finances, you understand? Mm -hmm. But if you are going to raise it, yes. just raise it. Excuse me, my husband. Yes, the person who asked the question did not explain, but I want to- Explain Yeah. Let me give a personal- Let me give a personal- Example, uh, yes. Example. I will appreciate that, yeah. Okay. I started making money very early. I started working of my, maybe from when I was 17. You know, there was much more wow. money. I'm not a millionaire, but you know, I was, I wanted to be independent. The things they eat in my house, I don't eat. Okay. I'm the one that doesn't eat with everybody. So I started working to make money so that I, when they are taking their pack without sugar, I can go to the and buy sugar. <laughs> sugar so and milk for myself. Like, exactly. See, when they start giving you small, small milk, I'll just go and take my own money and go and buy extra milk. That was how I grew up. So, you know, coming into marriage, I don't discuss money. I don't like telling people, I don't like telling people, this is how much I bought this thing. Before they say, ah, what you want you, what you buy. So yeah. I try as much as possible to just keep my money to myself. I don't talk money to anybody. And then coming into marriage, yeah. and I, I, I know I'm a spend, I, I'm a spend, if I like something and I have money, I go for it. I don't yeah. care whether, you know. And then it got into marriage, you are marrying somebody who is very prudent, who is future, you know, is thinking about this, is thinking about, you know, there was a lot of conflicts coming yeah. in. Yeah. Because we have two different money personalities. So I believe yes. this is what she's trying to say. And Beautiful. Like, like the person asking the question. Yes. When we now I have a... my Okay. Money. Okay. You see, now I have a very, if, if this is it, it's so simple to address. Do you understand? The reason why this particular issue causes problem between couples is because they were not given a good financial counseling before marriage. Mm -hmm. They allowed them to go into marriage and face their different financial issues. So this situation, what is the solution? Very simple. The solution is for the two of them to simply determine the percentage of the family income that goes into pocket money for each individual. Are you following me? Okay. So take, take, take us for example now. Do you get it? Take us for example now. We don't want a joint account. So money does not go to the same account. No. My money comes to my account. His money goes to his account. But the two of us knows what comes into the house per month. Do you get it? We both know it. And so let's assume now that for the two of us, eh, it is 400,000 era that enters the house every month from both of us. Do you get it? Because we believe that that money, his money is our money, my money is our money. So what we do is that we have accounts. 
There is an account for investment. Ah, need more sex. I'm coming. Yellow is it? Sister Ibi, shall you need more sex? Yeah, yeah, easy. But let's accept this one too. So there is an account for investment. There is an account for savings. There is an account for welfare. And there is a percentage that is agreed that must come for that must come to upkeep based on the need. But also, there is a percentage that the two of us agree that is for our personal pocket money that I want to use to buy anything. And each person determines it. So if I say now, for example, okay, mm, excuse me, Mio, I cannot, I don't, I can't spend anything less than 50,000 naira on my personal sale. Fine, we have agreed on it. So 50,000 naira is for your personal pocket money. Me, I don't need more than 10,000 naira. Thank you. That's the man talking. So fine. Now, since we have agreed upon that, it only means one thing. If I finish spending my 50,000 naira for pocket money before the end of the month, finish. <laughs> till, next, till next month. <laughs> till next month. Yes, it's an agreement. Do you understand? So yes. look at the, the welfare account, for example. I always ask couples, especially Christian couples. You know, we love giving more than each other. I always say Christian couples, always have a welfare account and determine the percentage of the income of that family that goes to that welfare account. So let's assume that the percentage that you send there every month is 20,000. The meaning of that is that any family member, anybody who needs help in church, whatever help we want to render to people, the moment we finish spending the 20,000 Naira earmarked in the welfare account, any other person that needs help till next month. Yes, till next month. Because the moment you don't structure your finances, you will always fight. But if you sit down and agree on it, say, okay, fine. Let's agree on it. So and so and so and so, and you divide it. There will be no even room for any argument again. Everybody knows what they are doing with the money. But the most important thing is that when you want to address it, don't address it in a way as if you are attacking the person. No, it will not work. You keep fighting. Address it as if this is a conversation of our family. How do we address this issue? How do you want us to have a balanced view? Let us agree. And the moment we agree on what to do about it, everybody must keep to that agreement. Do you get it? That's the best way to do it. We have another question. Okay, yeah. I think we've answered this. Some of the person that if peace of mind falls under act of service. But I think we are not going to focus on love languages now. We'll take, let's take the other questions, then we'll come back to that. How do I tell okay. my husband that I need more yeah. sex? What do you okay. do if you do not like your, your husband's family members? This is a two in one question. <laughs> question. You, okay. Husband, that I need more sex. Maybe okay, the man is no longer real. The libido is higher than his own. And how do you express that? Ah, I need more. Then what do you do if you do not like your husband's family members? Okay. So how do you express your husband that you need more sex? Number one, for you to effectively do that simply means that the two of you have no fundamental issues. Your relationship is good. You get it. Your relationship, that there, there are no issues. Because I realize that couples, they come to us with chronic problem that has developed branches. So okay. we must first even cut the branches to even discover what is the seed that became this tree. Do you understand? But if there are no, you know, fundamental problems, the two of you are good together. It's just that you want more sex. Simple. I tell ladies, I don't know who made the law that it is a man that must always make love to his wife. That is part of the stereotype we are talking about. It. Do you get it? It is the man that must always ask. It is the man that must always approach. It is the man that must always make the first move. Who, 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 I have been reading my Bible for a long time. I'm yet to meet a place where by God said that should be done. In fact, according to the scriptures, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7 from verse 4 down in message, the Bible says the marriage bed is a place of mutuality. It is not a place to stand up for your rights. It's in the Bible. I'm quoting the scriptures for you. The Bible says the marital bed is a big place of mutuality. It is not a place to stand up for your rights. It says it, it is a place to give each other pleasure, both in bed and out of bed. 
the husband seeking to satisfy the wife and the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. So shall I pay to get for the Bible? So first Corinthians 7, verse 4 in message. In fact, it's good to start reading it from verse 2 down in message. Do you understand? So, such a lady, once there is no fundamental problem, excuse me. When you want that sex, mm -hmm. lying down on the bed now, start with his nipples. People think it is only female nipples that are sensitive. Even is not true. Every part of our body, men has equivalent. Are you following me? I tell a lot of Christian women, they know how to hold mic in church. And even if you want to collect mic from them in church, they will never do it with you. The mic at home, they will not hold that one. I mean, you don't know there is a mic in your house. <laughs> the shape of that thing, does it not look like mic? <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> Are you following me? So, concentrate on him. Drive, drive him crazy. By the time you drive him crazy to a point, he is going to take over from you. The half, every man has an alpha male. You understand? So why are you waiting that eh, I feel like he will touch me? He is not touching me. I'm waiting for him to, to pick by word of knowledge, word of wisdom and gift of prophecy to know that I am, I am honey. So he should touch me. Eh? So why did not, did not touch you? Why are you now looking? Why are you looking? Are you following me? They like, I normally tell women, also, one of the reasons why sometimes it looks as if our husband are not interested in sex is because our own, we are too stereotyped. I say it every time. Eh? Not all men are missionaries. So don't kill all of them with missionary style. We have doctors, pastors, evangelists, lawyer, vulcanizer, eh, mechanic among them. They are different. Why, why are you always doing missionary? The Bible even said you will be above only, never beneath. So why are you always beneath? Fulfill the scripture. Get on top. What's wrong with you? <laughs> are you getting me? <laughs> Listen. Seduction is the office <coughs> of the married woman. Unfortunately, it is, single, it is single girls that know how to do it. A lot of Christian married women, they don't have G-string panto. Never. They will not have. Red pants, they don't have. 90, it is that useless cotton 90 flowered like this. That's the only thing they wear. Then they will go to bed. They wear pants, wear tights, wear bra, wear inner. Are you going to war? When you are not Boko Haram, you must fight war every time. What is wrong with you? The wahala is going to remove everything that you are wearing. The man is even tired of whatever, whatever. Listen, sometimes you that you know you want something in the night. Before the guy comes back from the house, the kind of what you are wearing should be crazy. My sister, go to market. Go and look for silk nighty. Go and look for transparent flowered nighty. Go and get them. Why are you wearing bra to, to serve that food on the table? You should sit down beside him and he's unable to concentrate on the food. Are you following me? It is not only the husband that you always... No, 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 no. They are not stud horses. So you too, take the battle to the gate. Give him a time of his life. Are you following me? Give him a time of his life. By the time he enjoys it very well, he's looking forward to the next time that you say you want it. Ongo my baby before then. Almighty. <laughs> so that's how to do it. Coach Tuski. Yes, okay. sister Evie. The second part of the question, she said that says, she How do you like her husband's family? I don't understand the women. Yes, <laughs> I, yes, we'll take back to the gate. <laughs> you know, one, I don't, this other there's question. some question. Yes, you see, this I want to answer the one you don't like, you don't like your husband's people. There is something I don't understand yeah. about women, and I think it's just tradition. You see, women, eh? They will travel to go and meet trouble. They will pay the transport fare of trouble to their house. Then they will host the trouble. And then when trouble is going, they will give it another room too. My dear sister, must you like your husband's family? Is it by force? Where is the law that says you should like them? 
If you don't like them, leave the person you don't like far away. I don't understand. Do you get it? The only time you can tell me you have problem is if your husband forces the person you don't like to come and stay with you, tipa, tipa, and give you headache and give you stress. That's another question. But if that, I don't like my husband's people, why do you want to like them before? Where is the law that says you should like them? I've told people over and over again. It is not automatic that you must like your husband's people. Relationship is not an event. It's a process. It is built over time. And if I start relating with you and I realize that your attitude to life and the way you behave, I don't like it. Excuse me. I give you the gift of distance. Stay far away. And I will make my husband to realize that sister so-and-so cannot stay with me in the same house. So she cannot come here. She can't come. We can't stay together inside the same house. So, so let everybody stay far away. And if it happens to be maybe your mother-in-law or your father-in-law, you understand. Then when you want to go and visit them, you will know that, yes, you are going for NYC training. You will know that it, it, it is not going to be beyond weekend. We will arrive on Friday evening and then we are leaving. On, you said we did not cause friction. That's what I'm saying. Why is it that you don't want friction? I don't understand. Number one, friction can only occur if you allow the person close proximity. Do you get it? So the most important thing is not to allow the person in your house. You see, I say it everywhere that I go. My dear sisters, it's not true. There are no in-law problems, only spousal indulgences. An in-law can only go as far in your house, as far as the owner of the in-law permits. So if your in-laws are disturbing you, they are not the one disturbing you. Your husband is allowing it. Your husband is unnecessarily indulgent. So it's your husband you should speak with. That is not your in-law. Your in-law cannot disturb you in your house. Your husband is allowing his people to disturb you. So it's your husband you should sit down and say, excuse me, this is my home. This is our home. I can only permit somebody whose presence will make this family to be happy. Your sister is always causing problem in my house. So your sister cannot come and stay with us again, period. And if you are like me, neither will I, will I allow my own sister to, to come. 50-50, no cheating. Let everybody stay away. You understand? And if we have to go and visit them, I will say, you know that me and mommy cannot stay in the same environment for too long. So we cannot go and spend one week in mommy's house. We will go Friday evening and come back Sunday afternoon. But if your husband now decides to now go and check his people and spend three days, tell me the reason why you want to stop him from going. Let him go. He will come back and meet you in the house. Yes, let him go. So you don't have to agree with them. The only thing I tell women about their in-law is this, because women too could be unnecessarily sensitive sometimes. When they do premarital counseling, I normally tell them that, please, whatever reaction you will give to your in-laws must be corresponding to the same reaction you will give if it was your people. So, yes, so whatever your mother-in-law does, if your mother did the same thing, if you know you will not send your mother out, you will just ignore your mother. If your mother-in-law does it, then don't send her away. Ignore her. Ignore her. You get it. That's because your mother, that's your husband's mother. They are your husband's people. So be fair. But if you know that if your sister behaves like this in your house, you will send your sister out. If your husband's sister tries to send her away and tell your husband to please talk to his sister and stop disturbing you. You don't have to be friends with them. You don't have to be their enemy, but you don't also don't have to be friends with them. It's not compulsory you are friends with everybody. Please, pick your acquaintances. You don't have to be. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So another question. So my first baby kind of drove a wedge between us because he felt I was giving him more attention. Of yes, course it you was are. true because I was trying to <laughs> adapt Mother, she confessed that she was trying to adapt to mother. But now yes. the ties have changed. I feel he pays more attention to the first and leaves me and the other children behind. But he feels that I'm only being jealous. How can we resolve this? Number one. So the children are 
said before, the children are children gone are now. Really, they have come in and they have yeah. drove a wedge between them. The husband has taken one and left the remaining ones to the wife and he pays more attention to that child. So she's trying to you see how does she bridge that gap yeah. again. You are trying together. to bridge the gap by using the wrong method. It is the gap between you and your husband you should bridge, not the way the two of you are treating the children. You are concentrating on the fact that he's giving one child more attention, leaving the others for you. The children are not your problem. Your problem is you have allowed the children to drive you apart. If you are going to kill a tree, you don't kill a tree by removing the fruits. You kill a tree by going to the root. The problem is that the two of you have gone apart. There's been wedged between the two of you. So forget the children. Stop putting it on the children. Is giving the is, is the child your husband? Ignore the children and whatever is doing for them. Begin to do things that will now bring the two of you together. So, for example, toast him one day, my husband. Can't we leave these children with your mommy or my mommy or with a friend? Can we go to an hotel and just go for a holiday of just three or four days? Just you and me. No cooking, no children. I just want to show you some paper. Are you following me? Go back to memory lane to before the two of you were married. Try and remember the things you were doing to him then that trips him. Begin to do them again. Forget children. You are you are addressing the issue that it's like somebody having um having ulcer, and then you now went and looked for a high grade antibiotics, and then you are giving the person. Excuse me, the antibiotic is a powerful drug, but it is not the drug for ulcer. You understand? You need mist mag for ulcer, milk for ulcer and eating at the proper time for ulcer. Do you understand? But if you now say, eh, but antibiotic is a very, very powerful drug now, because it's powerful does not mean that is the drug for what is going on. You understand? Eh, eh. The children is not the issue now. How he is treating the firstborn and leaving the others for you, that is not the issue. Your issue is that there is a wedge. So what do you do? Bring each other together, forget children. Stop complaining. In fact, complaining about how he's treating that child is going to be causing more problem. It's going to be giving him wrong ideas about you. So leave the children. Let him treat them the way he wants. You two treat whatever you want. Face each other. Begin to do things that bring each other together. Begin to create situations and circumstances that bring each other together. It took time for you to go apart. It also takes time for you to come back together. But once you start doing those things, over time again, you become each other's friends, you become each other's companion, each other's, you know, party again, and then you can move on from there. Yes, is, there's another question. Is there anything like not being specially compatible with your husband? <laughs> well, really, not, not so. I believe that there are no differences that cannot be resolved if the two parties are willing. The problem we normally have as counselors is that one party is not willing or both of them are not ready to cooperate. My pastor taught me, and I realized it is true, that everything can be learned and unlearned. Mm. So, if the two of them are willing to listen, <clears throat> whatever you say is incompatible can become compatible if they are willing to work on it. Listen, I've discovered one thing. There is actually no two temperament that cannot scatter in marriage. If you like, people will say choleric, you know my choleric. It's a lie. If the two cholerics are matured, they will live together, they will relate together very well. I am choleric. My pastor is a choleric. The two of us are very close. We hardly fight. The two of us are both stubborn. But you see, there are three principles of relationship. Purpose, protocol, and profit. 
For every relate for you to receive the profit of every relationship, you must discover the purpose of that relationship. When you discover the purpose of that relationship, you must look for the protocol that fits that purpose. That is the protocol you observe for it. The moment you observe the right protocol that fits the purpose of that relationship, the profit will flow. Do you get it? So it's mm. possible. Yes, there are different, they seem to be incompatible, but now we have married Abby. So let us now come to the table. Let's go back to the drawing table. This incompatibility, what, what is causing it? This, 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 this. Let's find solution. Because there's a solution to every problem. If the two of you are ready to follow instructions, solutions will be preferred and it will work. Results are predictable. The definition of madness is doing the same thing the same way and expecting a different result. If you want a different result, you've got to change your tactics. You get it. So it's possible for unresolved. Yes. Do you agree that women do more work in marriage than men? Women want to do more work in marriage than men. Is it, let me answer my question. Do we do more work than men? That's what I'm saying. You, you don't do more work. You want to do more work. Wow. That is it. Let me explain what I mean. You see, the truth yes. of the matter is that women, eh, they have this complex <laughs> of wanting to present themselves as the endangered species and the a very important species as a result they try to prove they try to prove a lot of points that's not needed to prove are you following me women believe that suffering is part of their world that shows that they are women so even sometimes what they are not supposed to suffer they will go and put their head inside it to show that they are women. So let me give you an example now. I keep telling women, you are the one that wants to breastfeed you. If you realize that the nature of your work and your own personal nature is going to make breastfeeding stressful, who told you that if a child is not breastfed, the child does not have a good mother and the child will die and the child will not be intelligent. I don't know where you get it from. None of my children suck breast beyond two months. None of them. None of them. None of my children, and I never did exclusive breastfeeding in my life. I never did it. Because you see, for me, breastfeeding is not an award. And it does not make you a good mother. The nature of my work and ministry and the nature of my own, my own nature did not make me to like breastfeeding. So I did not breastfeed. They drank milk. Ask Sister Ibi, my last one is it will be 18 in October. They are fine. They are doing very well. As in, they are highly intelligent children like this. Wonderful children. They did not die. Two, are you following me? A lot of women like this, they say they are virtuous women. Then they will do all the work in the house alone. They want to prove they are virtuous. Listen to me. The Proverbs 31 woman that all of us wants to become like. The Bible told mm -hmm. me that she has many mates. Hmm. She's an administrator. Are you following me? So I don't hmm. understand the reason why you want to kill yourself. You're a <laughs> banker. You have a lot of things you want to do. You will not do everything together. Hey, as you are sweat sweating, you are stretching, you are coming back. Kill on share, what is wrong with you? <laughs> For those of us who don't trust our husband and you think that if you get made, the maid will collect the load between your husband's leg. Okay, fine. Don't get made. Me, eh? Are you following me? I didn't get a maid. Not because I was afraid somebody can collect. I tell people, the moment somebody collects your husband, it is not the fault of the person that collected your husband. You married an irresponsible man. Because it's not a bag of potato that somebody can just carry. No brain, nothing. Nobody collected him. He went simple are you following me so i didn't get a housemaid not because i was afraid of anything it was because i just didn't believe in housemaid so what did i do i employed a housekeeper yes i employed a housekeeper so when these children were small and there was a lot of work to do she comes to the house then four times per week 
She will resume 6 a.m. in the morning and she will not go till 6 p.m. in the evening. She will do everything that I want to do. Wash clothes, wash plates, scrub the bathroom, go to the market, buy what I want, come back, rinse it, bag it, boil it, do everything that I want to do. I will come back from work like this. I will cross my leg, telling her what to do. Put that clothes there, ma'am. And um, those clothes that you wash that are dry. Let me arrange it there. You understand? Before I come back from work, it is my husband's food that I may not allow her to cook. I don't mind. She can cook my food. So before me, I arrive from work. She will have cooked what I will eat when I get back from work. I will sit down, eat it with cold drink, put on the telly with my little boy. Relax. She's doing all the work. When she's done, I pay her her money for that. I pay her daily and money for that day, and she goes. Do you get it? No stress. Why do should I kill myself? Why do you think I'm looking this fresh? It's because I refuse to kill myself. I cannot die. Yes, I cannot die. Because God did not ask me yes, so. to die. <laughs> do you get it? And there are some nights that I will toast my husband and say, sweetheart, tonight, it is suya. <laughs> And, and juice gari. that we are going to take, or suya and gari. Which type of suya do you like? I want to spoil you, my husband. Is it chicken suya, ram suya, goat suya, assorted, or together? Don't worry, I will pay for it. And we will buy the suya, drink gari, and go to bed. Okay, look at me now. I'm still with you. You understand? I don't mind staying with you till 12. After I leave this meeting, I may go to another meeting. Then I did all that. You now want me to die again. No, I cannot die. In fact, part of what you should tell your husband is I see my husband. Anytime I am tired, Jerusalem will not fly you. So don't be allowing me to be tired. I yes, know the Jerusalem flight is very, very important. So when I am tired, the pilot will go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I am the pilot. Mm -hmm. So make sure I am. And then please, when God blesses you and God will bless you, Get the household Amen. appliances that make housework easy. Get a washing machine. Get a, a, what do we call this thing that makes food to be warm? You understand? Microwave. Get a microwave. Get a gas cooker. Get a good blender. Get all those things that makes your work very, very easy. Make a timetable of food based on what you know your husband likes. Sometimes what stresses women is that they overthink. Even when they are sleeping, yes. air fire. And Tamaka, God bless you. Air fire. Very important. Women will be sleeping like this. Do you know that in their sleep, they will be thinking? Are you following me? And then finally, mm -hmm. I want to tell all women listening to me. Children are not a legal tender. They don't use them to collect money from bank. Yes, they don't use them to collect money from bank. In fact, they collect money from bank for them. So please, stop telling me you like children. You want to have four. Kilo day. Are you a farmer? You need them to till the ground. What are you doing with four? What are you doing with five? For those of us who have not had the four and five, for those who have had it, maybe you married in, in my own time. So you have football club. God bless you. But for all of you who have not had the four and five, you see, plan for two so that the third one will be the mistake child. Do you get it? <laughs> if, if, in fact, the best thing is to plan for one. So that the second one will be the next. Yes. Sit your husband down. My husband, I want to be young for you. These children will go. Look at us now as a couple. All of them have left the house. Eh? All of them. As I'm talking to you, all our children have left home. They did not say, oh, I love you, mommy. I will not go to school. I will stay with you. They all left us. They have gone. And my last one has even told myself that mommy, the moment I finish school like this, I'm not coming back to Ibadan. I'm going straight to Abuja or Portacourt or Lagos. Okay, that is where there is money. And she, she likes money. That's my baby, oh, my baby, my beloved baby. She has left. So talk about these things. But what I'm saying is that half of the wahala that women do, it is because we believe that if we are not stressed, we are not women. No, you are not born for suffer. We are not born to suffer. You are not born to suffer. You are, you are born to enjoy. You do, have you not observed, yeah. Sister Ibi? You will see a 65-year-old man. He's still looking young and bouncing. He's 50, hmm. he's 61 or 62-year-old wife. She has lost everything. She is haggard. Hmm. 
Are you following me? She's looking old. She's looking worn. She's looking used. Because she has stressed herself. She has allowed in-laws to... So instead of them to send all the in-laws away, she's playing good wife. She knows they are terrible people, but she must play good wife. So she will welcome them. Hey, let them come. Let them stay with us. We will take care of them. What is the color of your problem? What are you taking care of? What? Are you Thank following you me? So don't stress we yourself. It's not compulsory. Because just, it, we're still going to bring you back. <laughs> no we problem. We have a, a program that we do once a month as well. It's called Test Flow, but we'll talk about that. There's this question that I missed. I have just go okay. back now. He said, my yeah. OB has a bad breath. A bad Which breath. puts me off, off. To, from kissing him open. I have told okay. him several times to visit the dentist for solution, but he wouldn't. At times, I tell him to go brush or use mouthwash before we kiss. At times, <laughs> I just don't want him to feel bad. So what should she do? How can she help him? How okay. can she help him? Okay, all right. The truth of the matter is that contrary to popular opinion, Bad breath is not often caused by, you know, teeth like that. There's a particular organism that causes bad breath. You can read up on it. Are you following me? And it has drugs. It has treatments. Do you get it? So contact good dentists. Do you understand? Contact good dentists. Ask he them. doesn't want to go. No, you contact good dentists and ask for the drug of bad breath. Okay. Do you okay. understand? Mm. Right. Although I must also be sincere with you that for him not to want to go is also an indication that he's not as emotionally or spiritually matured as he should be. Because under normal circumstances, as the head and leader of the house, he is supposed to lead by example. In fact, he's not supposed to wait for you before he observes that that issue is there and preempts the it's fact possible. that it will affect you and then go and do something about it. Do you get it? But since it is bad breath, don't let us assume first that it is dental issue. Quite a number of bad breath is caused by a particular organism and that thing has a drug. So first you, first go to the dentist yourself, talk to them, it's bacteria on the tongue. Talk to them and let them, you know, um, um, give you information about it, what to do, what, what not to do. And then let him know. If you now do that, and he still does not listen. Excuse me, stop kissing him. Period. Why are you kissing him? Stop kissing him. <laughs> All right, Ma. Stop How can I do a marital evaluation for a man who is always busy and doesn't have time for the family? <laughs> so the, the real issue is not the marital evaluation. The real issue is that you are married to a very busy man who takes his work very, very important and seriously. I'm trying to put it madly, you understand? So what you should do is this, you don't need marital evaluation. You need shock treatment. Mm. Mm. Sit him down, one day, 2 a.m., wake him up and tell him, my husband, I think I'm thinking of leaving you. <laughs> also, I'm suspecting that, yes, I'm suspecting that it's possible another man will begin to give me attention. Because remember that it is a vacuum that can be filled. You have left your vacuum, you have left your space in my life unfilled. So I think we should talk. Thank you. Sleep will disappear from his eyes. And it's like, uh -uh, what do you mean by that? What kind of a statement is that at this time of the night, blah, blah, blah. My husband, I'm not fighting you. I love you. You are the love of my life. Eh? I don't want to lose you. That's the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying now. But what I'm telling you is that actually I've discovered that there's one man in our workplace who gives me a lot of attention. I'm beginning to think about him every time. And it is you I'm supposed to be thinking about. So because before things get out of hand, let us solve, solve the reason why I am being drawn to somebody else. The issue is that you are starving me of attention and affection. I am hungry. And remember that even the Bible says that if somebody should steal because of hunger, it says we should not prosecute the person. We should allow the person to go. I don't want to steal. I need you. So, but I also understand that you are a very busy man. And this busyness is because of us. 
I know you are trying your best to prepare for us and provide for us. And you don't know how much I appreciate and love you. But you see, that is not enough. So what I want us to do is that let us sit down. Look at your itinerary. Tell me once a month that is my day. That day is my day. I want us to substitute quantity for quality. I know I cannot have quantity. You're a hardworking man. I'm only asking for quality. So in the whole month, look for that day that is my day. And that day, you will go do double TLC. What are you doing? You are feeding me for the days of hunger. So I will be able to last until the next month. I'll be looking forward to my day next month. And that day is all about me. Breakfast in bed. You take me out. We shop. And then we go to a restaurant. And then we watch a thing, and that night you must perform extra special because it's my day. Are you following me? So we are substituting quality quantity for quality. That's how to do such things. But never play good wife and keep quiet when you are suffering in silence. If not, I assure you, it's a matter of time. You will commit emotional affair with another man. I hope it has not yet started. But if you don't address it, you will eventually commit it. Thank you so much. There's a question. This couple, they've had a baby, and because okay. of the baby, they've gone on sex holiday. Now they are trying <laughs> to come back. It's not as it used to be again. So she's, she wants to know what can she do to ignite the fire once again? That Okay, okay, they, all right. I don't know. Have gone through because of baby. Of it, okay. I don't know how old the baby is, telling me how long they have gone on break, but you see. Uh, um, she has a three months old baby. Three months old baby. So for about three months, they have gone, they are separate. It's good. They shouldn't just go back to sex. Are you following me? No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. What they should do is that they should start with romance, not sex. The two of them have gone dry in their emotions towards each other. People don't know that romance is the it's is the way stop when they want to do so they just no no abandon. no 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 they shouldn't abandon it. Why are they behaving like that? Are you following me? Since the baby is three months old, that baby should have started going to daycare. That's the problem of women. Maybe she's still carrying the baby around. Go and drop the baby in the daycare. Are you following me? Drop the baby in the daycare and then plan the sex. You see, people think that the only time we should have sex must be in the night. Who made this laws? I don't know. The Bible says we should pleasure each other, both in bed and out of bed. So the Bible has told us that there are some sex, they are, they are done out of bed, not in bed. It's in the Bible, it's not me that wrote it. Do you get it? So sometimes, plan some Saturday afternoon. When that baby is having afternoon nap, Leave all the the uh, where the plates, the clothes, everything you want to wash. Leave it. The two of you go to the sitting room or the kitchen. Have a good time. Leave her in the room. Let her be sleeping. Are you following me? Why is it that you want to do it at night? No. Pick a Saturday or pick a Sunday. Attend only first service. I don't know. You know, go and read my article. How church is unknowingly disturbing marriages. It's online. Some people should not be attending two services. But some of us, it is even three we will attend. First service, we go do. Second service, we go do. Third service, we go do. You will get home around six in the night. You are totally tired. What is, what is, did you kill Jesus? Call your HOD and say, oh God, our sex life is suffering. We want to do something this afternoon. Yes, tell him. You're a married woman, you're a married man. Nobody can catch you by it. Oh God, I'm going home. I'm going, I'm, I'm going home. My husband is waiting for me. And if you stop me, I will report to everyone. And I will say, you want to destroy our marriage. But today, Sunday, I'm only coming for first service, 8.30 like this. And after that, 8.30, don't wait for any fellowship after fellowship. All of you, put yourself inside car. Go home. Mm. Are you following me? Pet that baby. Once he sleeps like this in the afternoon, it, and if I, you, the two of you tell God, Father, let him sleep long down. This child must not disturb us, you know? So as he's sleeping like this, let him just continue to sleep like that. And then if the baby now wakes up, 
and you are in the middle of the work. I've told all of you, let the baby cry, <laughs> leave the baby. The lungs will just be big. He will become worship leader when he goes up. Let him cry. <laughs> Finish what you have started. It's a lie. You see, a lot of mothers, they're always shaking about their, their baby. The baby will sneeze. They, they will catch COVID. What is wrong with you? Nothing can happen to the baby. Put him in the court. Let him cry there. His lungs will become bigger. When he goes up, he will be leading worship in church. Finish what you are doing. Are you following me? So there are ways out to it. But since you have left it for long and the two of you have become discouraged, first start with TLC, tender loving care, some romance. Find time to take each other out, you understand? Begin to send love, love messages again. Send love songs to each other. Are you following me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do some caresses. I tell Christians in church, I don't know why couples don't whisper to each other's ears and laugh. Do you get it? You will see them like this. You will never know they are married. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. They won't laugh. They won't joke. They kill them and share what Christians. I don't understand. But such time, whisper to his ears, my husband, tonight will be powerful. Hmm. The team must get up tonight. Too. I will not allow for you. I, I'm really planning for you. Paint pictures in his mind and in your own mind. Your husband's and wife is permitted. It's not a sin. Are you following Thank me? Thank you. So if you do yeah. that, it will work. The lady says that her husband was green when they met. Probably was a virgin. And sometimes I suggest to him that we meet. Sometimes when we meet, I suggest to him to yeah. listen to programs that educate us on spicing our sexual life. But he thinks it's not a good thing to do. What should I do to spice up our sexual life together? That's, the man is okay. very religious. Does okay, so since he says it's not a good thing to do, before you deal with him, those things that you, you have learned, try them with him first. Let us see if you will enjoy it. Are you getting mm. me? So if you now do it for him, he now enjoys it. He now say, come, bros, come. Why are you mourning and shaking and trembling on the bed? Shabi, you said that uh, it's not necessary. That thing that I did for you, it is from those programs that, that I learned it. You now enjoy it, Abby. 50-50, mm -mm, no cheating. Too gay for me. You have to do your own back. You. So show him the um, advantages and profitability of those messages. If he enjoys it, we will know that his problem is knowledge gap and ignorance. I tell people, ignorance is not a disease. All of us are ignorant in one area or the other. It is a deliberately uneducated ignorance that is a pandemic. Hmm. So if you show him and he sees that, oh, which program can we learn from? Okay, well, I have some seminars that does that. I can introduce you to some of my seminars. I also wrote a book on sexual, sexual love. You can get it online. It's a very graphic book that talks about all these things, no hiding, straightforward to the point like that. So do it for him. But if you now do it for him, he now enjoys it. He's now not ready to do it again. Eh, suspend sex and let him know that the Bible says the two of us must enjoy it. You cannot be enjoying and I will not enjoy. So it's time to go and see our pastor. I will tell pastor, I tell women, women make a mistake. They're always hiding some things. If the man is not ready to listen, don't, don't cover him. Tell him. Next week, Sunday, I will tell Pastor. Yes, I will report to you. I will report you to your mentor that you are not doing this thing on the bed properly. So let us go and learn now. You get it. But before you get angry, introduce it to him. See if he likes it. Then use that one to encourage him that we can learn more. It's actually the fault yes, of married counselors in churches. They don't, mm. these things they should have taught the two of you before marriage at all. But a lot of churches don't do proper premarital counseling, usually about sex. You get it. There is a, there's a question that was sent to me personally that I would, I would really love to address because it's a very mm. important question and it's a question that affects a lot of women. Somebody sent a personal question to me. She said that um, her husband, let me read it. Okay. Let me read it out. She said that her husband, um, does not a husband does not uh, have the kind of spiritual life that she she has okay. you understand doesn't and pray. he doesn't pray as yes 
it doesn't pay as much as she expects and stuff like that. So what should she do? Good. That's if that is the only challenge you have with him, that is, is a good man, he loves you, he takes care of you and stuff like that. The only thing is that you are not satisfied yet with his spiritual activities. Don't, 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 don't cause problem in your marriage over religion. Are you following me? Don't. What you should simply do is leave him. You are not his Lord. You are not his God. You are not his father and you are definitely not the Holy Spirit. You that you are saying you are spiritually matured. 10 years ago, you were not like this. It was because some people did not give up on you then. That's why you are who you are now. Are you following me? So what should you do? Simple. Lift him up in prayers. You are not, you are not the one that is going to make him to grow. It is the jurisdiction of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? It's not, you can't do it. And if you start fighting him over it, you will now discourage him the more. You will see no reason why you should even pray at all again. So leave him. You see, people always believe that the man must be the priest of the house. I am still looking for the scripture that said that. Well, actually, I have not yet found it. There is no scripture that says the man must be the priest of the house. If he is not yet praying or doing morning devotion, do it. You'll be doing it. And then find personal time to pray for him. Father, I want my husband to be more spiritual. I want him to grow more. Moreover, some of the parameters that we use to measure spirituality is not true. Do you know how many people that lead money devotion? How many people that do gym gym prayer? That when they are preaching in church like this, fire is going. And it's a lie. It's His own fornication is a website. It's adultery. Eh? It's a, it's a whole website. It's a, it's a community penis as you're looking at it. And he will be speaking in blah, 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 blah. It's a lie. How do you measure spiritual maturity? The Bible told us how to measure spiritual maturity. Hmm. He said a tree is known by its fruit. Meaning no matter how small a tree is, if it has fruit, it is matured. The Bible now calls us trees of righteousness. So if you want to truly measure spiritual maturity, you look for the fruit of the spirit in that person. Is the person gentle? Is the person kind? Is the person loving? Is the person, you know, those are what you look for in that person. Those are the parameters to measure spiritual maturity. And how much of the word of God does the person want to obey? Not just quote. A lot of people just quote scripture. They don't obey it. I've been a Christian for a very long time. And I hope you know that I'm a minister. So I know what I'm talking about. So if he is a good man, he loves God, he loves you, he's taking care of you and the children, he makes you happy. Please, do not cause problem in your house and give him headache over the fact that he's not praying as much as you want him to pray. No, leave him. Let him be growing at his own rate. You, that you pray very well, continue to pray very well like that. Then add him to that prayer point. Also, go and look for the Pauline prayers. I have it so I can send it to Sister Ebi to help me give it to all of you. Begin to make those confessions for him. So if his name is Paul, call him. Paul, your mind is strong. You are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You, are, you have the force of the spirit of God. Your heart pants after God. You know, as the water pants, as the heart pants after the water brooks. You increase in wisdom. You increase in knowledge. Your eyes of understanding are enlightened. Confess it like that for him. You understand? The Bible says that we are condemned by the words of our mouth. And we are justified by the words of our mouth. It says, tell the children of Israel, whatever they say unto my ears, that is what I will do unto them. Everything you are calling is eventually coming. If you keep calling it out of him, it will eventually become that. But preserve your love and your marriage before that time. Do not destroy what is precious because of what is in the future. Does it make sense? Hmm. Thank you so much. There's one question here. He said, how okay. can a possessed man be delivered? This is a deliverance issue. He said, he causes, feels jealous even when I spend my money on myself or on my children to help or to help people. And he's a prayer minister in church. 
and he prophesies <laughs> and his prophecy comes to pass. But he, he causes her, gets jealous, and just have just badly behave. <laughs> Number one, my sister. He's not possessed. <laughs> and then there's another question. See, my husband just seen it's not important and it's causing a lot of issues. What my do husband, I do? My, my I'm not even allowed to fly this. My, I didn't, I didn't hear that question. Car. He said, our husband just, just bought a car. And okay. there's nothing more important than that car right now. <laughs> and it's causing a lot of issues. Like, she doesn't know what to do. She's not okay. even allowed to drive it, which wasn't so with our former car. Okay, beautiful. This is what is happening. Number one, with the first case, he's not possessed. He's a spiritual baby. He's immature. Are you following me? He's immature. You must differentiate between the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit. The gifts and callings of God are not without, are without repentance. A lot of people are anointed and gifted, but they do not have the fruit of the spirit because the fruit of the spirit is developed by consistently maintaining a close relationship with God. It's one of the reasons why God doesn't like releasing the anointing anyhow to people because when the anointing is released, both your vices and your virtue will blows on. So a lot of people entered into ministry when they should still be learning. There is a difference between charisma and character. Are you following me? So what happened with that first husband is that he has spiritual gifts. Do you get it? But he does not have spiritual fruits. He doesn't have the fruits of the spirit. So what you should do is very simple. You need to be patient. And then you also need to get those confessions that I'm talking about and begin to confess for him so that the spirit of God will begin to draw him if you remember something, then it, it happened in the Bible. If you go and read the story of Isaiah, you will observe for, that from Isaiah chapter 1 to Isaiah chapter 5, Isaiah kept saying that, woe is unto Israel. They are an unclean people. They are sinners. They are bad. Blah, 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 blah. Fine. But if you get to Isaiah chapter 6, you discover that the Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. The moment Isaiah saw the Lord, his attitude changed. The next thing he said is that, woe is unto me. I am an unclean man in the midst of unclean people. So every time a man truly encounters God, God shows him himself, and his attitude will change. So what you should do is to begin to pray for him that he will encounter God beyond all the paparazzi of church. God will encounter him. God, 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 God will collide with him. The moment that happens, he will see himself for who he is. He will break down Amen. when God shows him who he is and immediately his life will change. Amen. Concerning the issue of the car, my sister, the only solution is this. Instead of fighting him over that car, eh? Help him to celebrate the car. <laughs> you see, for a host of men, eh, when they buy a new car, that car is very, very important. <laughs> very, very important to them. It's like football. Have you seen the way some men take football? Have you seen men who cry? Gendi Olongo, are you following me? A man, solid, giant man. Who will be crying because his club lost? <laughs> and you are wondering, what happened to you? Why are you crying? Some guys are like that. Now, listen, it's not that he loves the car more than you. That's why you, you are getting angry. No. Because you think he loves the car more than you, you are now reacting to him. That reaction is making him to be angry. So it's now causing problem. No, what you should do is this. Help him to admire the car. In fact, one of these days, as the two of you are going out, go and kiss the car and say, ah, my husband, this your car is very, very beautiful. Can I make love to it? <laughs> are you following me? <laughs> and then he will say, ah, uh -uh. what is wrong with your head? What I, ah, no, 
because I can see that you love this car. So I was thinking maybe it was the second wife. So I want to help you to love the car very well. <laughs> Are you following me? He would laugh and say, Kilo is a woman, you know. Why are you behaving like this now? What have I done now? Uh -uh. Are you following me? Laugh over it. After six or nine months, yeah, he did this thing. After he has scratched it, if you are living in Lagos, after he has scratched it one or two times, are you following me? His head will come down. Do you understand? But it's not something to... I tell couples, always yeah. differentiate between variable factors and fixed factors. Hmm. If a factor is variable, don't fight over it. Ignore it. Enjoy it. Have fun. Tell him to come and use the car to take you out, to take you for your next outing. When Lagosians help him to scratch it once or twice like this, his eyes, eh, that is up, we come down. Do you get it? But don't fight over it. Just have fun with him. Make a lot of laughter over that car. You will see that you are encouraging him and you also like what he likes. After a while, he will just flash your face. You. You. The way right. men are. You don't, don't fight over it. Please, how can you keep up with me? Thank you. My, so my Instagram page is my name, Adetu Toshofuga, on Instagram. On Facebook, I'm also yeah. Adetu Toshofuga. Yeah. And my YouTube channel is also Adetu Toshofuga. It's my pleasure. Thanks Thank for you having so me. much. Lastly, let's take one last question. What's your opinion or your view on sex toys in marriage for Christian women? Vibrator. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and stuff like that. Oh, okay, very good. They have their importance depending on what is going on. Do you get it? Um, number one, for every man who is married to a circumcised woman, they need sex toy. Are you following me? Why? Because if a woman is circumcised, they have removed what will give us sexual pleasure. And in fact, a lot of married women who are not enjoying sex and the husband is trying everything and she's still not enjoying sex. The truth is that quite a number of them are circumcised. They just don't know. So if in that category, take me go, check that place. If they have removed the cleat, you are circumcised. Now, a woman like that, the husband needs to reach the G spot inside to be able to give her pleasure. But our fingers are different. So I advise such couples that instead of wasting time, go and get a good vibrator. There is no penis in the world that can do what vibrator will do. No penis vibrates. So what such a husband should do is that simple. He should just lubricate the vibrator, insert it inside, put it on. The vibrator will be beating against the G-spot, then you should start making love to her like that. She will enjoy it more than the rest of us that were not circumcised. Do you get it? So sometimes sex toys are important depending on the situation. Do you get it? But if the issue is that you and your husband, you are starving each other of sex. So because you are not having enough, you are now pleasuring yourself with vibrator. The issue is not vibrator. The issue is that something is wrong with your marriage and your relationship. Go and deal with it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Or some couples whereby they are apart. Maybe one is in America, one is in Nigeria, and then they are not together. I tell couples, the moment you're being apart is beginning to affect your marriage. It is time for one of you to come home or the other to go. Yes. So the issue with those ones is not vibrator. The issue with those ones is that they have fundamental problem in their house. They are now using sex toys as damage control. So the real solution is to solve the problem. But there are some couples that they must use sex toys. If the lady is circumcised, she should use sex toys because she has a right to enjoy sex. And it's not her fault that she was circumcised. So she should use vibrator to give her the pleasure and he will reinforce it for making love to her body. Look at a woman like me sir. now. I am in menopause. Do you get it? Part of the signs of menopause is that no matter what the husband does, she will not lubricate. Mm. She will always be dry. Yes. So what should a woman like me do? I should go and get KY jelly. It is permanent. As I'm talking to you, it's on top of our bed. It is permanently there. That's also an example of a sex toy. Sex toys are anything that enhances 
sex. So for me now, I need KY jelly to be able to continue to enjoy myself because now I am dry because I am a menopausal woman. So imagine if I now say, no, no, I will not use KY jelly. Eh, eh, my bumper will continue to boost. It will be pet me. No, no, you be low. And I will no Thank more enjoy it. So, so that's how it works. It's my pleasure. We've had it hot, hot, hot today. Coach Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see the group. Like, we are so happy. Thank you so it's much. It's my pleasure. So, uh, Inka, Inka, are you here? My pleasure. My Evo, pleasure. You take, you Thank you so the... much. Okay. Mm. Evo. Yes, I'm here. So um, oh, please. Please. Um, Thank you this so is much. like this is like, you know, you just came and just blew our minds away. You know, we, this <laughs> was originally you. supposed to be for just married women, but immediately you started speaking, I went out like, no, single people still have to hear this because <laughs> you, you they, they have to learn beforehand that I wish yes, I had learned some learn of this thing. I wish I had yes. known some of these things, right? Yes. There was something you said. Yes. There was something you said about women taking up more stress because that happened to me yeah. just last night after our Valentine date with my husband. Yeah. And he was like, she you want work. Let me give you work. Carry out solve all the problems that we have in the house. Say you want to solve problems. Right? Do you see? So I as in I wish I had listened and heard you before this. So and, and everybody here, I'm, I'm sure I speak for all of us, like we have learned, okay. we have all learned and we are relearning. Thank you very thank much, ma'am. Yeah, honored. It's my pleasure. To have you here. Well, my pleasure. To have thank you for having me. So, so, PwC women, could you please just omit your mic and let's just pour out blessings because this is a talent that God has given it, His daughter, and we we just first of all let's appreciate God for this talent and then pour thank out you. blessings on her. PwC women, thank please you. just omit your mic thank you. and. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your daughter. Thank you. What you have given Yes, this is Praying Women's Circle. We'd love to have you with us. So just we have our link in the chat section. Please click on this link and join us. And join us. We, we have more of this coming for our Married Women's Circle. For Mali, we, we know now, married and loving it. We are, we are hot. We're going hot. We're going hot this year and even forever more in our marriages. It gets better for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Let's remember um sex floor is coming okay no we've had sex floor already so next this time next month we're having another talk tuesday and it's gonna be fire like this right so please let's come um let's get prepared for it thank you everyone for showing up thank you mali for being here god bless everyone coach Tukski, thank you again thank you eb ebc lc it's it's it takes it takes a certain sort of women uh, of woman to know a certain sort of woman so ebi thank you very much for introducing <laughs> us to coach Chuxi. and coach please we are going to have you again we hope you would um honor our invitation because it's going to be have my pleasure men. We'll, we'll have both the men here and women so yeah the that's men better need yeah, they need yeah. to hear yes yes so we'll have our couples hangouts and, and we're we'll inviting you thank you ma it thank will be my pleasure much. always thanks for having me too God good bless night everyone. sisters have love a good you night, all. sisters bye thank you for being here bye um, thank you bye okay bye. you finally finally put on your video <laughs> <laughs> i had you if you please stop the recording. Meanwhile, the yes. chat box was on fire today. Like, as in, I I couldn't. I had to. I had to ignore the chat box to listen and jot down. That's what I'm trying to do now. Let me. Uh -oh.